We're going, right? We're going. You're the one who told me we we're can't be. Cultured Saints. I'm Pastor right. Goodman. You're, you're Pastor Eli Lietzow. And we're talking about the small cult articles. Uh, we already did all our bickering. What a horrible entrance into our fourth season, my man. We did an episode already. Did you forget? Oh, that's right. Never mind. <laughs> this People dumpster fire is already lit, as the kids say. It <laughs> was like three months ago. I don't remember that. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't that good either, I'm sure. It was better than our worst. It was better than all of season three. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Small cold articles. All right, let's do it. We're not going to ask how I'm doing because you don't care. um, How are you doing, man? I don't care. Wait, we did that you joke You don't wrong. care how you're doing? I don't actually care how I'm doing. Um, I'm doing okay. Things good in Texas? Things are good. How are you? Yeah. I don't you know. care. COVID was fun. COVID was not fun. You just got out of quarantine, though. Right. Hey, it wasn't awful. We should have done I mean, a podcast while you were I'm in quarantine because you were bored. <clears throat> right. You know, after a couple of days. I, I'm not trying to make light of it. I know that some people have had it worse and some people have had family members who've had it much worse than me, but... My family, we got out of it pretty, pretty simply. So, thanks be to God for that. The worst part was the sitting around being bored because you're not allowed allowed to do anything. No, actually allowed. No, no quotation marks. Actually, <laughs> actually not allowed. <laughs> they can That's see right. in this season, buddy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do a lot of quotation marks in my. Uh, my sermon. Yeah, it's true. Like sometimes you say, I respect you, Pastor Goodman, things like that. <laughs> right. The sermons are the best. <laughs> the sermons Jesus are said. the best. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're forgiven. Oof. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> no me gusta that. <laughs> let's do the small cold articles because this is getting this is getting worse by the moment. All right, uh, let's do it. <laughs> so remember that the small cold articles are sort of like Luther's full on angry old man stage, right? This is his. I'm old. I'm about to die, and this is my last chance to confront the Roman Catholic Church. And so I'm just going to lay it all out on the table and tell all the kids what I think of their stupid hobbies. Yeah, except he doesn't die for like a, a decade later. Yeah, I know. He mistimed it, but he was still very grumpy. I'm curious if he would have said it differently, if he would have toned down his speech a little bit, if he didn't think he was going to be dead the next week. See, I, I've i actually wondered if Luther truly, in his heart of hearts, believed that he was about to die the next week, or if he just sort of said that a lot as an excuse to completely be rude in public. You know what I mean? Because, like, you're willing to cut some slack Clever. to the people who are about to, to pass. So you're like, yeah, okay, you go ahead and you go ahead and say that. But <laughs> that's a, that's a, that'd be a real clever move. I mean, like, and he was a clever guy. So I'm just, I'm at, putting it out there. Luther. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. So, okay. So last time, <clears throat> three months ago, we did um, the first part. And, and we made it clear that the first part of the small article, uh, small cold articles, and, and kind of the first part of a lot of the uh, the different uh, books within the the Book of Concord within our confessions, um, it, it it puts where we do have the common ground. Mm-hmm. Right. So the last time we had the common ground, it's like, hey, at least we all believe in the Trinity. Right. Nobody's got issues with that. That's good. <clears throat> right. And then, so, but, but then Luther's tired of being, um, you know, nice. And then he jumps right into the chief, uh, article. The chief article, right? Sounds Which important. He, and and he, he, he literally calls it the chief article. Right. Like it, this is, this is the most important one. Still the most important one. Right. This is yeah. the most important. It's always right. the most important. Th- that we, that's enough building up for suspense. It's justification. The most important thing that we have to talk about is that this, Jesus Christ, our God and Lord, died for our sins and was raised again for our justification. It's Jesus who saves you, not your works. It's the the cross that saves you, not anything that you do or contribute. It is only, 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 only Jesus for you. Right. Jesus for you, always. <clears throat> right. And, and the, Luther isn't putting anything new uh, in in the small cult articles, right? This is this is the the chief article that's found in the Augsburg Confession. Well, not just the Augsburg Confession. Forth. It's it's John. It's Isaiah. Right. It's Romans. It's Mark. It's Acts. Like over and over and over again, because it's just Bible passages. 
almost right. all of it's by, and then he'll go on to say, yeah, the thing that we said in the Augsburg Confession that we got from the Bible, it matters so much that absolutely nothing in this article can be yielded or surrendered, even though heaven and earth and everything else falls. Right. <clears throat> what what I what I like about the Augsburg Confession, uh, apart from you know I'm Lutheran, so I have to, <clears throat> is um, you get far more uh, church fathers being quoted in that than you do scripture. I think uh, maybe I'm exaggerating on that. Um, and and at the at the first glance, you'd be like, oh, that's not good. Um, but it's funny because within the Augsburg Confession. What they were trying to do at the very beginning there was trying to lay this foundation saying to, to the Pope and, and to Rome uh, and the Holy Roman Emperor, like, hey, look at what all of the old church fathers used to say. Uh, we're, we're saying the same thing. Like the old church fathers are with us in regards to justification. So that means that they were with the scriptures all the way back. Like, Let's, let's get back to, to what we've always been, which is Jesus for you type thing. By the time Luther's around with small cult articles, he, he, it doesn't even appear as if he says much about the church fathers. He's just like, nope, here's the scripture and here's where you guys are wrong. Well, because this is just kind of the line in the sand. Like we would genuinely like to come to some kind of concord, some kind of agreement on this thing. But at the end of the day, like if this is just a discussion of how the, the cards are going to fall on the table, we are not giving an inch on this thing. Uh, Luther says upon this article, everything we teach and practice depends. If, if we're not going to have this, everything else is going to crumble. If you make the chief article something other than justification for whatever is going on today, the whole church is going to start to crumble slowly, sometimes quickly. Right. Right. <clears throat> yeah. So, I think we covered that part, right? We kind of, I don't know, maybe we didn't, but... We've, we've talked about justification I think a we've lot. probably I talked mean, about Jesus at least once in the three seasons that we have recorded. Uh, what, we're, what we're saying here is this is why we talk about Jesus so much. It, when, we, when we annoy you, listener, uh, listener singular, uh, it, it is because this is all we have to talk about. This is the thing that everything else is going to stand upon. And so as we start to go into the small cold articles from here, we're going to keep coming back to this. And it's actually a really good way to start to do theology. Uh, what we're going to do is, as we go across different practices and different beliefs, we're going to say, what does this have to do with the chief article? And does it contribute to it or does it take away from it? This is the same thing we really do in church too, by the way. Like, So when when I go into your your church on Sunday and I see the the giant cross hanging, I say, does this, does this contribute towards, does this point towards rather justification or does it take away from justification? And if it points towards Jesus or gives Jesus, I like it there. And if it points away for Jesus, I, I don't like it there. It's, it's yeah. pretty simple. And, and, it may, and, and Luther kind of makes this point uh, in, in uh, the, the second article of the second part, which we're going to get into. Um, there may be things that, that aren't inherently evil, um, but if, if they're just neutral, then we've got much better in Christ. So let's let's not even not even put forward the neutral things. Let's just put forward Christ. Yeah, and you can have neutral things in the world, but not in the not in the worship service. Right, <clears throat> not when it has to do with theology. Not in the divine service. Not in worship. Not when uh, when you're devouting uh, devoting. Excuse me. Um, large portions of your your time uh, with with service upon them. Um, these neutral things are, are not beneficial then for, for the congregation or for the believer. <clears throat> right. Right. Sure. Right. Um, so I thought you were going to keep going. Um, no. So another thing that we talk about for, for this, this worship service, uh, and really the, the article that we're going to start to talk about today is called the mass. Uh, the mass is the divine service, the worship service. And, for us, that's what it's called. Uh, but it's it's one of those frustrating things because when I do something and I, I call it a mass and you do something completely different and you call it the mass, well, whose is, is the mass? Or, or you could do it with other things too, like we can do it with marriage. Uh, you, you can do it with, with you know, you, you can name it whatever you want, but well, the word actually sets out what a mass is. Uh, it's it's the apostles who had uh, gathered the people together for fellowship, prayers, uh, breaking of bread, and uh, what was the other one? I don't know. I lost what you were trying to say. <clears throat> the apostles' teaching. 
from you can't, you got to do it. I, 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 I zoned out. Sorry. Yeah, that happens. Yeah, I, I, do, <laughs> I talk. You stop paying attention. This is going to be great. Back to season three, y'all. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, hold on. Because uh, when we talk about the mass, uh, Lutherans don't talk about the mass anymore, at least present day Lutherans. We just don't do it. We don't use that terminology anymore. It's, our, <clears throat> it's in our confessions, but we, we don't talk about that way because it's not always helpful. Right, because it always has the connotation of, of Roman Catholic Mass. Um, so the idea of the Mass itself was just, uh, it, it was uh, the English term for the, the Latin term for the kind of the dismissal at the end of, of the whole divine service. That's how it kind of started out. And then at some point in time, it, it, uh, it was beginning to be used for the entirety of all the liturgy and all the, um, all the divine service itself. Uh, <clears throat> so... That's so the mass basically means, like you said, Pastor Goodman, it's the divine service itself. But when Luther would talk about the mass in the small cult articles, he he talks about it in a in a bad way because he's he's distinguishing between all right what the Lutherans say as the mass or the divine service and what the Roman Catholics at this point in time say about the mass or the divine service and what's actually happening and who's doing all the work and is it uh is it heaven to earth or is it earth to heaven sort of stuff that's that's going on here right so when luther is describing the mass he's describing how the the roman catholics are abusing the mass or the divine service. Yeah, he, am he's I, not am kind. I that right? Yeah, he's not kind either. He says the mass in the papacy has to be the greatest and most horrible abomination, since it directly and powerfully conflicts with the chief article. Like that sentence, and that's why we want to talk about it. It's not that we hate your chanting. It's not that we just don't like Catholics. It, it's not any of those things. It's that what you're doing is pointing away from Jesus. No matter how much right. you talk about him, if you're, if you're actually saying it's our works, our sacrifice, our, our doing of anything from earth to heaven that's meriting salvation, that's helping sinners, you're taking away from Jesus. And, and remember why the divine service is so important. It's <clears throat> because this is the place in time and space where God is actually giving us the meritorious works of Christ. Right, his his work on the cross, his forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation—they're coming to us in the divine service. We've spoken about that in, in I think, in season three at some point, um, and so that's why the divine service is so very important for us. We don't we don't receive Jesus and His cross out there in nature. We receive Jesus and His cross where the word is properly proclaimed and the and the sacraments are are correctly administered. Right, according to Christ's if, if, institution. Right, and if you're if you're doing that incorrectly, if you're not proclaiming the word correctly, and you're not administering the sacraments correctly, then you're not giving Christ where Christ should be given, and that's why it's such an abomination, as Luther's saying. Right, and, and not even just where, but also to who it should be given. Right. Um, so here's the deal: uh, when you sort of start to depart from Christ's institution, and it doesn't even seem like a, a huge deal because, like, it, even if you go into our hymnal, like we have words that aren't in Matthew chapter twenty-five, twenty-five, right? Sure. <laughs> Hope so. Uh, <laughs> that where the words of institution are, or First Corinthians, where uh, where where Paul takes it, which is where ours come from. We have all sorts of stuff that's sort of an eclectic thing in the liturgy, and we recognize that there is not actually from heaven a do the divine service in this order. But at the same time, again, do these things point to and deliver Christ, or are they starting to slip away from that and enter into where you contribute? Because when you start to contribute, what happens to the people who can't bring it, and what happens then to the people who just would rather do it a different way. Uh, when you sort of give this wiggle room, abuses start to take form uh, and, and shape. And, and back then they came with the buying and selling of masses. This was one of the, the real big things that they were doing. That was a no-no, just a no-no. Uh, that, that you would pay your priest to say the mass for you while you weren't there. And even though you didn't eat and drink for the forgiveness of sins, they said, yeah, it's totally fine if you give us money. Right. I mean, it was it was done it was done <clears throat> on your behalf, and then therefore the the work accomplished through the sacrificing of the mass, the doing of the mass, um, was credited to you. And it was so again, it was the work of the priest that was credited to you, not the work of Christ that was credited to you. Right, but also you weren't there. 
Well, I, I don't need to be. Well, how do you know? Because Christ says, eat it and drink it. And this is the problem is when you depart from Christ's promise, you depart from certainty. Like this is, this is sort of the thing. I know that the eating and drinking of what look like bread and wine, forgive my sins, because God's word says this is his body and this is his blood and they bring you forgiveness. When I start to go on something other than this, I'm a whole lot less sure. It's, it's sort of like when you give me technology advice, I just, it, it might be true. Probably isn't. Probably isn't. How do you know? Um, and like, I understand the temptation because like, I understand m most of our listener or singular would would rather pay money than have to listen to this but also well if god actually promised that through preaching there was forgiveness of sins you should hear preaching yeah that'd be good but not also uh, not only excuse me <clears throat> was the practice uh so that individuals could kind of get out of going to church for an hour or two or five, whatever the case may be. Back it gets worse, the, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, during Luther's time, it was probably a lot longer. Um, <clears throat> but a lot of times, the, the buying and selling of the, of the masses were, were done for other people. And often, it was done for... People who weren't the, even alive anymore. Right, the dead. <clears throat> Right, Which so they should all need kind of them snowballs because yeah, and this is just what what happens. This is what the devil always does because he can't make anything new, so he'll just corrupt God's teachings and then he'll just lean on it and let it get further and further from anything that actually brings comfort. Um, there's there's another thing too before we even get to the dead that that Luther talks about in the small called articles. It, it it's maybe helpful. He also says the sacrament that belongs to the community of the church is being used for one's own private devotion. It is wrong to toy with the sacrament without God's word but also apart from the community of the church. That if I'm doing this simply so that I don't have to be around other Christians, well, then the common union, the communion, is probably already being pretty corrupt. It's, it's a gift to actually be knelt side by side with sinners that I sometimes don't like and being told you're connected to them because Jesus forgives their sins. And so you can love them, not based on the fact that they've earned it, but based on the fact that he's joined them to him in salvation. And you're along for that ride too. Right. <clears throat> it's interesting, even though there is this subjective salvation, subjective justification for me, and we speak about it, right? Christ for me, Christ for you. We, we are the church. We are the body of Christ. And so it, it's not a <clears throat> fine. I'm gonna uh, come to come here on a, a random Tuesday at at uh, eight in the morning when nobody else is around, and have the pastor uh, do this. Uh, this mass thing for me or maybe i won't even come on eight in the morning but i'll have my mass said at eight in the morning on tuesday and then it's it's good uh, i'm good i'm good to go and that's impossible because if it is communion then whether you're all by yourself because you're a shut-in in a nursing home or, uh, or 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 just couldn't make it you're still connected like it's common union with heaven and earth with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven because it is bringing you jesus who connects you to everyone else there is no such thing as private christianity even though we desperately want that to be the case because it's always old adam who wants to make the narrow road narrow for the people that we don't like we we just want to sort of say this is my salvation and it can't be your salvation and that's, that's a terrible, terrible path to start going down because when there's only salvation for some of us, there's not going to be salvation for any of us. <clears throat> yeah, that, that's where we always, that's where the sinner always ends up going. Uh, we, we fall right into line with uh, all of the devil's temptations, which is basically, did God really say, can't we do it another way? Isn't there a better way that you can get the God stuff? And inevitably we always say yeah of course sure let's figure it out mm -hmm. oh that's that's pay for the mass said for me right and then we can might as well pay for other people but because this is well this is kind of a, a cart before the horse type of thing when you're making this kind of bank from the thing and you want to build real fancy cathedrals you need to keep the money coming in i've already got money for you well what where else can i get some money you can have you can also have a mass for somebody who's not even here right now like right. on earth, you, you can have a mass said for somebody who's already gone into, ha well, let's not give them heaven just yet. Let's come up with a place called purgatory where your sins Iowa. are purged from you. 
<laughs> and so, um, where your sins are purged from you, uh, all of the sins then that, according to the Roman Catholic Church, you didn't deal with in confession, absolution, and penance, they're going to be taken away from you in purgatory unless you buy masses, which is, well, you got to ask along with Luther, if the Pope can really just let people out of purgatory and he loves them, why doesn't he? Yeah. Why do you have to make him work for it? Because cash moves everything around me. Cream, get the money. Dollar, dollar bill, y'all. I don't think you're allowed. To, to quote the hymnist. I don't think you're allowed to quote the Wu-Tang Clan. It's the, it's the great hymnist. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're regretting this season already. Um, but this is it. They're, they're now trading in souls of the dead so many things i'm not allowed to say in regards to the wu-tang clan (laughs) and the the (laughs) real issue with this is now now that we're talking about purgatory what we're saying is the cross wasn't enough the cross was not where your sins were purged because lutherans actually do believe in purgatory too there was a place in time and space where your sins were purged from you that that's the root word purgatory it happened where Jesus bled and died for you on the cross. That's your purgatory. It is finished. Now more purgatory is all gone. No more purgatory. It's finished. There was a purging. Your sins are purged. No more sins. <clears throat> I, I'm going to try and put a little bit of a lipstick on a pig here. Um, I'm curious, and, and again, I guess I'm not a, a good enough historian to, to, to figure this out, because... Like, like we had said at the very beginning, uh, with the Augsburg Confession, the uh, Melanchthon and, and the Reformers are trying to point back to all the early church fathers saying the, the church didn't always say this, that the, what the Roman Catholic Church is saying now. <clears throat> and it wasn't like the church woke up, the Roman Catholic Church woke up one day and, and went from the proper understanding of justification to the sacrifice of the mass and uh, selling indulgences. Uh, it was this slow progression of that. Um, <clears throat> and I think unfortunately that's that's the way of that's the way of the sinner when we're not reproved, when we're not corrected, when we're not actually uh, continuously digging in scripture and and sharpening iron with iron type thing. Um, that it, it, and, and it's that what geometry uh, that truth in geometry where at the very beginning you can be off the slightest uh, uh, amount and it doesn't look like it, it matters at all but after 200 years you're going to end up selling indulgences um, if it's if that's not checked right so I mean and this is this is it like they'll still quote uh, Augustine and, um, or Augustine depending on how you pronounce it uh, right or wrong my bad uh, but uh, they'll, they'll say Augustine never dreamed of it this way and, and you can know simply in this uh, Augustine preached Christ's salvation for sinners apart from works um, he, he did this against the Pelagians and so then simply look at your practice and say again is this Jesus or something else Purgatory, along with every service and rite and commerce connected with it, should be regarded as nothing more than the devil's ghost, says Luther, because it conflicts with the chief article. Only Christ and not human works are to help souls, which is Galatians. Yeah. And there's there's nothing new under the sun. It's the odd thing that, you know, uh, Luther during his time is dealing with the Roman Catholic Church, who's, it, it seems as if they've, they've fallen away <clears throat> to the nth degree. Um but we also see that in the Old Testament. We see that in the New Testament. We spoke about that uh, last year uh, in regards to when the uh, when the kingdom got divided into the northern and southern. It, it, they thought it was a good idea to set up a temple in the northern kingdom. But after a few generations, not only were they not worshiping Yahweh anymore, but they were having false worship. Um, they were worshiping false gods. They were they, there was no longer justification. It was no longer God for you. Uh, forgiving your sins, it was, I've got to do X, Y, and Z. And maybe it's not even Yahweh anymore. Maybe it's Baal. Well, but if it's an all Jesus or nothing thing, this is what always is going to happen. When you take away Jesus, it's got to be filled with something. And if there's only God and man, then every time you take away Jesus, gosh golly, I wonder what they're going to fill it with. It's always going to be some kind of works or emotion or something of people. Right. We want Jesus. 
Right. <clears throat> right. And so uh, this is kind of where the, uh, at Luther's time with the small called articles, this is where the Roman Catholic Church has found itself, where uh, the, the sole justification by grace through faith, Jesus Christ on the cross for you, given out in time and space, that has been removed. And now something's got to fill in that vacuum. And now the vacuum is being filled with <clears throat> the right, R-I-T-E, of, so the actual just doing of of the uh, the mass that that's good enough it's not that the mass actually gives you something it's actually you you're you're working the mass is what provides the the, the forgiveness or the or the merit um and then like you said it goes to uh purgatory it goes to indulgences it goes to pilgrimages it goes to all of these things where the as soon as jesus is taken out um like you said, you have to fill it with something, and then it just gets more and more and more egregious. Right. And it's not just history. Like, I can say, well, I've never been told I have to take a pilgrimage to see the decapitated head of John the Baptist for the meritor, uh, for the, the forgiveness of my sins. I guess I've never had to do that. But at the same time, the real question is, have you walked into church actually really needing something and not been given help? This is, this is it. Like, if you're told when you walk into church desperate for help because you know that, like, I done messed up everything this week. What a, who am I to, to even look at God, let alone myself? Are you going to be told, try harder and then God will love you? Or are you going to be told, your sins are forgiven you? It's either Jesus for you or you for you with Jesus being a cheerleader. And it can right. take all kinds of weird shapes. You're right. There, there's, there's a lot of talk about relics and pilgrimages and all of these things. But at the same time, um, even though like we're, we're not sort of visiting um, the, the skull of Mary Magdalene uh, because we're losers, uh, we're still taking pilgrimages. We, we completely are looking for our own top experiences. And I want to say maybe even actual legitimate pilgrimages. I mean, how many people have we... Have we met? Do we know? Maybe we're even some of them who, goodness gracious, we'll drop 10 grand to go to the Holy Land. But when was the last time that we were consistently in church? I have never been, uh, but I would like to. Like, I'll be the first one to say, like, I would love to see Rome. I would love to see the architecture. I would love to see the Holy Land. I would, I'd guess, even go to Germany. Um, but really, though, like, it'd be cool to see all that stuff. But, like, the idea that this is somehow a religious experience right. that that brings salvation you can say you know what it's really cool that i've gotten to go to jerusalem because now when they talk about the sheep gate i actually know what that looks like and i can i can picture it i can better understand it great but your sins were still forgiven in your baptism before you understood what a sheep gate was right right like, you're not but adding to your salvation by this let's yeah let's let's not be proud of the fact that i i took a, a little dip in the jordan river uh no let's go back to the the font right no, I've never been there. Okay, the general you. The general you. The okay. general you, right? Okay. <clears throat> we, we, if, if we take the pilgrimage to Jerusalem, we shouldn't be proud of going to, to Jordan. Let's be proud of being baptized back in that font when I was a baby. I'm baptized into Christ. That sort of stuff. That sort of stuff. I, I mean, that's what Luther's all about here. Yeah, that's, that's, that's his main issue. And again, the mass, it's, it's become so egregious and so... Uh, without Jesus, that that Luther, whether he's legitimately on his deathbed or not, <clears throat> um, he just can't have it anymore. Uh, mm. it, he's he's got to lay it all on the line of if you've removed Jesus, then you've removed salvation, and those who have actually are the ones who actually are, are doing it. It's it's the priests, it's the Pope. It's the bishops, it's the Holy Roman Emperor, and all of the people, all the congregation, they're just following your lead. You're, you're leading them astray. That's why this is so egregious, is you're, you're telling them a false way to be saved, which is leading them away from Jesus. Right. And so we're saying it's not that it's bad to go to Jerusalem. It, it's not that it's bad to, to even remember the people who you love and miss at communion because you know that they're with Jesus now and you are with Jesus too at that supper. It's that you need to add to it that cannot, cannot have an inch in, in, in our faith and hope. It, it has to be only Jesus. That's how it should always be. I guess I'm done talking to you right now. 
was nice and quick. <laughs> Like no, it. I mean, I, I, I like that. I, th I, I think this is a good place to stop. Um, and we, we sort of hit the point. And this is going to be where we keep going with the small cold articles. We're going to keep looking at different things that are happening and saying, what does this have to do with Jesus? Because that's, that's probably a real good question to start asking. And we'll find Luther being rude to people along the way, which will be awesome. Because now it won't just be you being rude on the podcast. It will also be Luther. I'm never rude. <clears throat> I just tell it how it is. It could be two things. We out. <laughs>